You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate it. This is episode number 855, in case you're wondering, and we're really, really glad that you're spending your time with us. Hopefully, we give you a little value, maybe a lot of value. I think this is a question that, uh, it's actually a question, frankly, that we did a long, long time ago, so it's probably a good time to do a refresher, which apparently is what we're about to do. So thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. We mean it. And I've also learned something, too, about humility this weekend, and that the the less humble we are, the less we are able to learn. Like, scientifically. Like, literally, when you let your ego take over and you close your mind to lifelong learning, you literally are able to retain less. And that really made me think this week about humility because it's something that I need to work on. And when I say that, it makes me just think of all of you. And I'm just very, very grateful for all of you. But it also makes me think of a life lesson that in being humble, it's really one of the true keys to even more intelligence. So I'm thinking about that every day. It's food for thought, food for thought for your business because business is built on what, Rob? Trust? Relationships. Relationships. We'll go with trust, trust, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty, okay, solid answer. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading. That's <laughs> okay. It's kind Read of like, what happens when the drone's having a problem? Go up. Yeah. Trust? Anyway. True. All right. But anyway, today's question, we're going to be talking about a question that's come up over and over again. And it's an important topic because it actually has to do with the Uniform Law Commission and aerial trespass per se. That being said, this question is all about if you take an image over someone else's property because it's private property, do you have to get their permission to use that image at all? The answer might actually surprise you. It's quite simple. Uh, if you want to skip the show and just get the answer, just go to dronepilotfieldkit.com because the answer is in there. Hello, this is Dan Peters. Um, I'm here from Kansas City. And my question today is, can I sell photos or videos legally, of course legally, taken when I fly my drone over private property. Let's say I'm flying in a field, a farmer's field, and I'm flying over wheat or, or a river or a bridge or something. Can I commercially sell that or do I have to get permission from the owners of the property? Thanks, guys. I enjoy your shows every day. I listen to them almost every day uh, and I look forward to your response. Thanks. Thank you, Dan, very much. I'm curious what you're shooting. It's always interesting to know what kind of images you're coming up with uh, that I don't know, make them different than other people's. But I don't know, what are your thoughts? Maybe he's doing like a 35 image stack. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe it's a 37 image stack to make it unique. Uh, the extra two images uh, make me so much better than everyone else. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, anyway. It is just like the baguettes at home. They are so much better. So generally speaking, I mean, what he mentioned specifically was wheat, which I thought was funny. Uh, Do you know why that's funny, actually? Why? Do you remember a long time ago, actually on the show I mentioned this, probably a lot of you don't remember this, and I um, watched the movie What's With Wheat, and remember I was telling telling you, or like, what's what the food, or I think it's what's with wheat. Anyway... It's a Netflix documentary, talks about how glyphosate, which is Roundup weed killer, is in all the flour that we eat and why so many people are becoming gluten resistant. And it's actually sometimes it can be a yeast resistance, sometimes it can be a gluten resistance. But anyway, so yesterday they proved that all Cheerios have glyphosate in them. Probably from things like Roundup. The glyphosate is the chemical yeah. found in Roundup. And, yeah, there are actually more than Cheerios. A lot of foods, actually. Mm-hmm. Different. Baby foods, I saw. Granola bars. Anyways, that's a little bit of a squirrel. It's not a squirrel, though, because glyphosate could be seen on a hyperspectral imaging sensor and could be picked 
out. So if we wanted to go around, oh gosh, this could be a viral video right now. How to figure out if your flower has glyphosate or not. <laughs> Step one, buy a drone. Step two, buy a hyperspectral camera. Step three, figure out what wavelengths of light are reflected and absorbed by glyphosate. Step three, fly over the fields and figure out if glyphosate is on the fields. Step four, report to the news. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Business idea. So step five, can you sell it commercially when you take that? Oh, piece? yeah. Oh, dude, there's got to be so many markets for that right now. I mean, as more and more people are becoming anti, you know, uh, gluten, which, you know, for some of the older generation, they may not understand it. But to put it in terms that may make more sense, my wife and I would say six of her 10 friends are all gluten intolerant as of post-college. Hmm. And there is no reason as to why. So I wonder if an old guy like me doesn't have as many problems because I built up enough of a tolerance over time. Or because glyphosate wasn't created until like 1992. No, but that's what I'm saying because I've still taken it just like they have, right? Or I've still been exposed to it just like they have, but mm -hmm. it didn't impact me the same way. And it's probably, I can't believe we're talking about this. Hopefully it's interesting, yeah. <laughs> but it's like when you say, like, some parents will say, I want to make sure I have a dog around my kids or a cat, just so that they build up the tolerances to it, right? And they don't become allergic and freak out when they're 10 and they go to someone's house with a dog. Same kind of concept. I don't really know. So it was brought to market in 1974 under the trade name Roundup, and Monsanto's last commercially relevant United States patent expired in 2000. So glyphosate has been used substantially more since the year 2000 because of the patent expiring. Got it. More products. And of course you would see Monsanto's name in there. I mean, they're just everywhere that this kind of crap comes up. I really hate it because, you know, I film a lot of ranches, and I, I just filmed another one yesterday, and... Sure enough, there are Monsanto bags. Like, yeah. I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. I was just like, I don't even know what's in the bag, but I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't no. I'm such a millennial response. No. <laughs> There's some altered seeds in there in some sense or another, but uh, okay. So well, yeah. Oh man, I could go down this rabbit hole for days. <laughs> We've already gone too far down this rabbit hole. Now we gotta climb ourselves Sorry, guys. out of it. Girls. So, but the reality is, let, let me ask the question this way. In what situation would one need a model release, whether it be for a, a building or a person? I mean, so I, to, a model release is only for a person. So right. if you were to shoot the property and you could easily recognize people's faces in the image, then he would need a model release and he could not use that image for commercial purposes. The big case in the drone world that happened about this uh, was actually, if I remember correctly, it was out of, it was an ad done in the New York subway. I mean, do you remember this? When they had posted an aerial image in the subway, it ended up having a nude bather on one of the rooftops and no one picked it up until it had been printed and was like on the wall because it was so small, but when they blew it up to like a 12 by 12 print, boom, boobies. Oh my word. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awful. <laughs> yeah. That was, I think that was like 2014 or 2015. I can't really remember, but I totally remember that story because this was evident. But going back into aerial trespass, you can fly anywhere. The only people that control the airspace is the Federal Aviation Administration. Um, if you had to get permission from everyone to shoot their house, then how did Google come up with Google Maps? Do you remember giving permission for them to come shoot your property? Yeah, and, and you could... No, no, no. Did did you? Let me ask you the question. Did well, you? Because you just answer. said yes. No, no, no. <laughs> the answer is obvious, so I just skipped over the answer, <laughs> right? Um, I haven't been living in the same house long enough to well, know. Well, what I was going to say is that clearly, obviously, they're earning money from those images. Yeah. Maybe not directly. They're not selling those. They might even be selling those images directly in certain instances. I don't know but it's certainly a commercial application. What about a property release though? Are there certain instances in which you take a picture of an image, say of some architecturally unique building that the architect's known for, just as one example, you probably couldn't take an image of that and, and, cre and create something that you sell commercially without getting that person's. Yes, you could. Without getting that now, permission. the only time that you need you need permission. This is why we created the application Legal Flyer because these 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 things get muddled. Um, you need permission to take off and land from someone's property. 
that's a commercial release or like a property release. So the property release is kind of the same when someone, uh, they, they give like, let's, let's say a movie permission to film on their property. That's for them to actually come down and set sticks on the ground. So I will say, okay. Like for example, for example, Lisa, who's, uh, married to a very prominent person in the quack quack group. Uh-huh. I could go fly her house all day long. And she would come after me legally in every way possible, and she would lose because it's not aerial trespass. That's what the ULC, the um, Uniform Law Commission, was trying to come up with a law for states to essentially – or a guideline for states to essentially follow in creating aerial trespass law. And this is the big thing that, you know, Greg McNeil was pushing for, uh, saying that, like, yes, it should be aerial trespass. If anything from zero to 200 feet, you cannot shoot their property. I mean, this is something that Gregory McNeil was avidly pushing for. If you're not familiar with him, he is the one of the owners of AirMap. Um, but the FAA came out, DOT came out, a bunch of industry advocates came out, including Amazon and Google X, saying this is garbage. Um, yeah, you know, uh, this is, I mean, if this were law, this goes back to like how I've been, uh, arguing with some of the Navajo nation administrators. If this were law, just to try to like bring the concept down from 30,000 feet to something that's understandable. If zero to 200 foot was aerial trespass, yes, you would have to go get everyone's permission the, uh, for uh, any photos you were to take. So, for example, you could get in trouble for what's called aerial trespassing if you were flying from zero to 200 feet in anyone's quote-unquote airspace. Now, luckily, um, it looks like the ULC is not going forward with this, so there is no such thing as aerial trespass at the moment. So you do not need permission from a landowner to take a picture of their property. Do you need permission to take off and land from their property? Yes. Yes, you do. That's a property release. Again, Legal Flyers, the application that my friend Jason and I created for that exact uh, reason. If you're flying around and you take off from public property and you take a picture of a home, that is totally 100% legal. How else would drone base be operating? I just asked that question, which I'm actually like absolutely... It furious with drone base right now because they were trying to poach my number one client and they're like straight up offering everyone these these crazy deals and luckily I have a, a client who's like you know with prices this low it just makes me wonder about quality and I'm like agreed you know agreed it's 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 one of those things so I want to do a show coming up here on like what happens if a drone jobbing company tries to poach your client what's the best way to go about it because if you have a smart client, they're going to get it from the get-go. You're not going to have to say very much. And how you react could actually say more about you than the drone jobbing company trying to poach your client. So, And it is capitalism. So you can't blame them. True. Right? I mean, that's, that's the society that we live in as much as we might hate it when it hits us personally. But anyways, I think... Um, that Which is why it, you got to focus on quality, quality, quality. Because you can charge good prices if you're, if, if you're charging quality. I mean, let, let me put it to you this way. Uh, my client, you know, he was, he sent me the, the email and they were offering the, uh, the job that I just did for him for like a hundred dollars. And I was like, um, wow, <laughs> that's a big difference. I'm like, well, someone's going to go buy a drone. They're going to go click, click, click. And here you go. <laughs> like there's no metadata. There's none of this. Like you don't own the copyright to it. Like, 720p camera. <laughs> Spark. I'm gonna go fly my Spark. <laughs> oh geez, no Spark is twelve. Yeah, twelve megapixels. I think it shoots four K video. So it's it just grainy, spark? just super grainy. I'm not sure actually. Hold on, let me check yes. now. DJI Spark video. I don't, I don't fly the Spark, so, so I just don't care. We have one, right? Where is it? Um, it's in the hallway. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. See, I find it fun to fly. Uh, you're right. It only shoots 1080. Um. Hey, Dan, I hope that answers your question. You should be fine with the kinds of things that you're talking about specifically. Obviously, it can get deeper and more complex um, depending on what you want to do. Uh, so, anyways, anything else for our friend Dan? Um, No, long and the short is it, go fly, my friend. Go fly. No, I don't want to talk about that anymore. But uh, when he did ask, is there value in doing wheat inspections, there's significant value. One thing I would say, and I haven't really been a big proponent of this, but after talking to a couple people on agriculture, it seems like everyone's prices has to come down to a per acre price because that's how every farmer thinks 
about their financial spectrum of the farm is what's the cost per acre, what's the yield per acre, uh, what's cost savings per acre. So um, just how they've been trained to think of it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep, agreed. So anyway, cool. well, on that bombshell, it's going to do it for us today, guys. Um, if you could please leave us a review on uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Overcast, or wherever you download shows like that really means a lot to me it's also a great way to get feedback from you guys on what's working and what's not um, we've got a couple big announcements this uh, coming up and those extra reviews could help some people who would be affected by these announcements essentially we're going to be giving away drone you to a very select group of people that um, in my in my eyes uh, deserve it so I'm like, very excited about it couldn't agree more yep anyway that's gonna do it for us today my name is Paul I'm Rob this is ask drone you. Hey.